everybody. It's good to be back. My name is Eric Legault. I've been building um, Outlook and Office add-ins for 20 years. I used to be uh, an MVP for Outlook and Office apps and services from 2003 to 2018. And um, MVP Martin Van Stam and I have co-authored this Blazor Outlook add-in sample that we are going to showcase for you today. I'm going to load up my deck here. So Blazor, basically, we can run C Sharp in our web add-ins now, which is phenomenal, right? Typically, if you're writing C Sharp in, in a uh, web project, it's, a, it's in a web API, but now we can run C Sharp in web add-ins. That's a big win. I mean, that's very exciting, right? I know Blazor has been around for a couple of years, but I'm not sure if many of you have thought of using Blazor as a solution for your Office add-ins, but it is possible, and we're going to show you how to do that today. So. Blazor is basically just a web assembly that allows you to build a .NET Core compliant website that interacts with the Office JS APIs. So you can uh, use your reusable Razor components to build cross-platform solutions, and these, this runs in most m modern browsers. So if you're thinking of migrating some uh, VSTO or Visto solutions, this is your opportunity to reuse a lot of that business logic that, uh, that you may have in your C Sharp code and continue to use JavaScript as well. And there's some interop capabilities between the two that allow you to build some, some pretty amazing solutions going forward. So as I stated, Blazor is a web framework. It's for building Razor components. We host it in a bunch of different ways. Um, there are many kinds of Blazor solutions, well, three different kinds of of hosting models. One is uh, the one that we're going to be looking at today is, is using the Blazor WebAssembly or WASM um, client focused type of solution. You can also build uh, Blazor server apps where all the UI rendering is done on the server and there's no client component. And you can do hybrid solutions as well, which allow you to, um, to do all kinds of fancy things for hosting on native mobile and desktop apps kind of thing that uh, render to an embedded web view control. But regardless of the hosting model, the way that you build Razor components is the same. So if you're familiar with building uh, websites in ASP.NET Core with uh, with Razor files and all that, you can still continue to do that. You can even mix in other JavaScript UI frameworks like Bootstrap. And so you got a lot of choices for building a full stack web development experience with .NET. You also have the ability to share code between the client and server apps. Um, so lots of possibilities here. And if you're interested in comparing some of the hosting models, there are some uh, guidance available in, in Microsoft Docs that you may have some very unique scenarios that you want to consider. So take a look at to see which one is more appropriate for you. Going forward, if there's some things that you expect to do in Blazor, you can't do the typical things that interact directly with the desktop, like the file system or sockets or multi-threading. Everything in Blazor is single-threaded. Um, if you have any highly secure app, applications that are using um, .NET for system.security.cryptography implementations, that's not supported in Blazor for now. Um, you you will want to look at using the subtle crypto APIs for those scenarios. And if you are integrating Azure solutions like Key Vault, you can't use client secrets at the moment in the client projects, but you can continue to do that in uh, like your web API server solution. So getting started, if you want to build an add-in, feel free to get a developer sandbox that you can get a renewable 90-day E5 developer subscription. And make sure to go to the Office Add-in Samples repository that has this code sample ready for you to run. And keep your eye on README in that repo for breaking changes and guidance that we may add to it after the fact. One of the things that you may come across if you run that sample right in, uh, right away from, from GitHub is um, if you hit F5, make sure that you set up your email address for the tenant that you're testing with in the solution and set maybe you might have to, if you're using Office Developer Sandbox tenant, you may have to enable multi-factor auth and I'll show you where that setting is in the solution. And you may have issues sideloading the project. I was having those issues as well, so I'll show you a quick way of getting started without sideloading and just manually installing the add-in. All right, so let's get started on the sample here. All right, so let's get taking a look at the project tooling here. Uh, we based this off of a, we stole two project templates from Visual Studio. One, we started with the Blazor client template in Visual Studio, and we also used a, an Office web add-in template to get the side loader project. This is 
over here. So we'll provide some guidance on how to correctly. I'm trying to get my. My zoom in going here. Um, I can't recall off the top of my head how we migrated this side loader project from an office web add in template, but I think it's more of associating the web project with this imported side loader projects. And uh, Martin's got some uh, interesting techniques that he wants to perfect when he comes back from vacation. He's going to be working on that. We've also had a discussion with some of the ASP.NET team on, on tooling updates that may be coming in the future to get an actual bona fide Office Web Add-ins Blazor template in Visual Studio. So hopefully that uh, we'll get that at some point. All right. So uh, I mentioned how you set up your tenant. You want to add your email address here. And you may need to set multi-factor auth. True. Um, but if you're having problems side loading it, then what you want to do is go into the solution configuration and set the Outlook Blazor sideloader project to not start. So you will just be starting the web server. You go to your My Add-ins page in Outlook, load the manifest file from the build folder. Um, it's not the actual build folder, but there's a subfolder that has a auto-generated manifest that's not the same as this XML manifest file because it has placeholders for the remote app URL that are changed at compile time with the address of your uh, your local web server. So that you'll have to do to get that going. So let's take a look at the tooling in this project. It's if you're familiar with ASP.NET core projects, you'll see the familiar www root, the model, pages, and shared folders that are typical of a lot of ASP.NET core projects. In our case, we have some our main logic is in the index razor index razor pages, and we also have the index HTML page. I can't draw a circle for the life of me, can I? And this blazer add-in dot lib dot module dot js file, which is pretty important, as you'll see soon. But let's take a look at the, the first thing you want to do if you're setting up a blazer project is take a look at the index HTML page. It has the main root component specified in this div as the app for the value of the ID, and this will make sure to load the Blazor runtime um, and other situations. And you may don't get over focused on this particular reference here. It's looking for a blazor.webassembly.js file that does not actually exist in your project. OK, at, it's going to know how to find this file just by the name of it, because it's going to match the um, the project namespace name. So you're going to have to make sure that this file is named just like your project so that this other named file can find it. It's a little confusing at first, but don't worry about it. So the other main file is that blazor add -in .lib .module .js file that I just mentioned, and this is where you can customize the loading process and the before start function. You can also define like the logging level and other hosting model options. This is where the, uh, the .NET runtime gets downloaded um, along with the app and all the other apps dependencies. And the, uh, it's where the runtime is initialized so you can run the app. After that fires, you have your code in the index.razor.c C sharp file. And this is where in the on after render async, we can load other JavaScript modules. Right. So in this case, we have an index.razor.js file that's co located alongside the C sharp file with our razor page. Right. And once that external module fires, then it goes back to the, to the Blazor module. And then the after started function fires. And that's where you can initialize libraries and the entire Blazor instance is added as an argument if you need to do some pretty fancy things. So in this case, for this demo, we're simply going to be listing all the attachments in a current email message and just displaying some of that data in a task pane. And we have code in that JS file that's going to be going through all of the attachments in the email and getting the data, calling some asynchronous methods down here that's going to call the get attachment content async method and bring all that together so that it's rendered in our actual razor page where we have some components set up here to grab data from this mail read data object that we're setting in the C sharp class by calling this await get email data function that's going down here calling a JavaScript function in that JS file to get 
the data from it. And once that object is populated with data, then the razor component can render it. So let's hit F5 and hope the magic happens. It's going to be loading an instance of the um, of a browser, but this is not where we want to showcase everything because it's going to fail and I'll just blow through these breakpoints because it's not hosting the you know, office runtime, obviously. So you're going to get an unhandled error on the bottom. But if we go to Outlook, find an email with attachments, load our add-in, load our add-in, maybe I'll have to go to the Outlook client because that button is not appearing, is it? It seemed to have moved. For some reason I saw it up here at one point. Let me double check to make sure that the add-in is still here. It's not. Where did it go? Oh, brother. Okay, well, let's load the add-in. Brief. Thankfully, we're right. This is the folder I was mentioning earlier. It's a subfolder of the project. It's in the bin debug office app manifest and this is where the compiled version of the manifest will run okay good it's loaded it was there yesterday it was there yesterday Whoop. all right go back to our email button yes laser outlook sample so this is going to launch the task pane now some of these breakpoints are going to get fired Oh, an unhandled error has occurred. Fantastic. I wonder what happened here. Of course, the demo gods have deigned to tell me something is going on. And can I figure it out fast? Maybe let's just restart it. I don't want to close Visual Studio. Let's try this one more time. If not, I'll just give up because the demo gods have clearly been angered. And let's start this again. Cross our fingers. This was running yesterday, of course. But at least you saw the UI load. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least things are working. Let's try this again. Come on. Magic button, load the add-in without errors. Oh, there it is. Fantastic. There we go. We've got some of the base 64 attachment data output to the task pane so you know that all those functions that we that I showed you as I walked through everything actually worked. In closing, let me see if I got back to my deck here. If you want to have some guidance on exploring Blazor, there are a bunch of links in this deck. Feel free to spend a lot of time understanding the intricacies of Blazor and JavaScript interop because there's a couple of magnificent pages in the um, link down here in the ASP.NET Core Blazor JavaScript interoperability. There's a couple of documents on how to call JS from .NET and how to call .NET from JS. They are very long reads. You may get tripped up, um, but have at it. Take a look at how we're doing things in the sample and take it from there. Other than that, if you have any questions, feel free Feel free to ping me on social media. Um, hit up Martin Van Stam as well, and keep your eye on that sample repo, and especially in the readme, we'll provide additional guidance based on the questions and the feedback that you give us. So hopefully that got your ideas and light bulbs going to build web add-ins using Blazor. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Thank you, Eric. That was awesome.